faster and get a Bible answer faster. We don't pass the plate so that you'll feel free to investigate. Welcome to uh, Word from the Lord. James over here with you, and we are glad you are watching us. We've had a little few little technical, technical difficulties, te technical difficulties, as my little daughter says. So uh, uh, appreciate you watching and, and staying tuned with us. And we want to say also to those of you who are up in Michigan, thanks for watching, and we hope that you're ready for study from God's Word. We're running promos for our tent meeting that starts Monday uh, up in Eden, North Carolina, and so we hope that you will. Visit with us if you're in Virginia, come down. If you're in uh, uh, Rockingham County, come out. I heard uh, Charles on the buzz today saying that, uh, you know, they're talking about people, nothing to do in, in uh, Rockingham County. Oh, there's going to be a lot to do. The next two weeks, we're going to be going on the tent meeting every night. And as you heard in the promo, we have a question and answer session every night. Now, friends, that is something that you won't get in any of these other churches. In the man-made churches, they don't want you to ask questions. They don't want they don't want the camera. They don't want the questions. They don't want to scrutinize them. They want you to take what they say. <clears throat> and that's just that's just a matter of fact. But we allow you to come out and examine what we're teaching. That is uh, one of the, the, the key things that you can recognize in the Church of Christ. We'll give you an answer. We'll give you an answer. I was just on the phone with Brother Kevin Pendergrass. He's coming up uh, starting... Uh, Monday night, he's going to be going through most of the week uh, on television, so he'll be up here. Uh, probably some folks will be with him, but I'm just saying that we are going to be having, really, a double gospel meeting. We're going to be going under the tent every night at 7 o'clock, and then on television uh, every night of uh, that same week. Here's our television schedule. I'll come back to our, our uh, um, information, but here's our television schedule. Monday night, 10.30 to midnight. Tuesday night, 10.30 to midnight. Wednesday, uh, 9 to 10. Thursday, our regular time. Uh, Friday, 8.30 to 10. Saturday, 8 to 10. Uh, Sunday, 8.30 to 10. That's our regular time. Monday, 10.30 to, uh, 10 to midnight. And it starts all over again the same time, except for the, the last Saturday. So you can watch this online. You can watch this um, uh, uh, on your own channel uh, 47 in Reedsville, or, or I think it's cable channel 17 in, in uh, Henry County. Uh, what is it in, is it channel 5 in, in uh, Danville? Not sure. Check your, check your local listings. And, uh, but, but nonetheless, friends, we are, are, are trying to fill the county, the city, the area up with the gospel. And it's all going to start at our, at our fall tent meeting. We uh, have a number of these a couple times a year, at least two times a year, we've been having uh, tent meetings, two-week tent meetings uh, for the past few years. And so we hope that you will make it out to the tent. It's right beside the mall in Eden. You can see Belks over here behind uh, the mall. And so that's, that's how you know where it is. Just turn right there off of uh, 14. If you're coming down 14 from, from Virginia, uh, come to uh, uh, Meadow Road. Exit off there to the right. Cut back to the left, go across uh, 29, uh, go across 14, and uh, turn into the the mall right there. Or if you're coming from, say, the Reedsville area, just come on up till you come to the mall, exit off to your right, go straight across, and there's there's the tent. You'll be able to see it. So come on out to the tent. No collections. We never ask for your money. We never we never pass the plate. That's another uh, key thing that we're doing, friends, is we're showing the community that, you know what, we put this on, it doesn't cost them a dime, everything we have is free, and so we want you, we want you to come investigate the Church of Christ. Exercise your freedom to, uh, to ask a question. You know, we've been seeing some things, uh, Mark's played it, we played it last, uh, last week, Brother John Robertson was, was asked to leave the county supervisor's meeting, county uh, board, of, uh, board of supervisor's meeting. Uh, simply because he was sitting there, uh, denied his freedom. I mean, he's just a uh, citizen, member of the press, sitting there, and uh, asked him to leave. And uh, I don't know. They might have been trying to keep other members of the press out. I don't know why, unless they were, uh, you know, afraid of, of of saying or doing something on camera or for the record. But in, uh, individual citizens having the right denied, well, you won't have them denied at the tent. You behave yourself in an orderly fashion, you'll have a, a chance to ask a question. We'll hand you a microphone. You can ask it where everybody can hear it. And uh, 
uh, you know, we'll talk to you. We'll have a discussion with you. We'll answer your questions. And so that's just the kind of people we are. We're not, we're not like those that uh, do to us. We do what the Bible says. We, we, do, uh, uh, we return good for evil. And so we hope you'll come out and investigate. Brother John Shannon will be doing the preaching, uh, old-fashioned gospel tent preaching. Uh, a, lot of t- a lot of people, when I say a sheet sermon, they say, I never heard of a sheet sermon. Well, sheet sermons were before they ever had projectors. Sheet sermons before they even had uh, chalkboards, probably for the most part. They just had the, 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 the scriptures up here on the sheet behind them, and all the scriptures are there, all his points are up there, and you can see it. And he does a masterful job. He's a great teacher and preacher, and I think you, uh, you'll uh, enjoy coming out to hear him. So come on out and, and, uh, and visit with us. We'll be glad to, glad to have you. Now, tonight, friends, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with, and I know we're, like I said, we're running a little uh, back on time, but I want to start with Luke 10 and verse 26 because this is what we're concerned about. We're concerned about with you studying the Bible and reading the Bible, but it's not enough just to read the Bible. What you need to do is you need to make sure that you're reading correctly. Today we were knocking doors. Today we were knocking doors, and a uh, uh, as we were walking down the street, we noticed a lady that was she was reading her Bible. She, we could hear out there she's reading it out loud, reading it to herself, and and um, and so uh, we 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 heard her reading the Bible. We came back up the street, and uh, she was out there, and I walked up to her, and and I uh, jokingly said to her, "What Philip said in Acts chapter eight to the eunuch? He said, understand us what thou readest.'" And, uh, you know, she knew exactly what I, what I was talking about, and she kind of chuckled, and, and I asked her what she was reading. She was reading the Psalms, and we had a good little discussion there and invited her out to the tent, and she said she's going to try to come, so I hope she will come. But, you know, when we're talking about religion, folks, everybody reads the Bible. Everybody says they read the Bible. The question is, how do you read it? If you are not reading carefully, friends, you will read some things into the Bible that are not there. Or you may overlook some things that are in the Bible that you have, uh, that you that you should have picked up on. And so, how is it that you're reading the Bible? You need to be reading carefully. And that's why Jesus said uh, unto the the man that came to ask him the question, said, "You know, how readest thou? How, how are you reading the Scriptures?" And so, we're concerned about that. So, we don't want you just to study the Bible. We don't want you to open the Bible and and uh, and and say, "Well, they're reading around the Bible." Because anybody can read a verse, take it out of context, and that, that's their proof. We want to know how do you read. Now, this is why it's so important. If you are not careful about how you're reading, you may believe what your grandfather said or what your mom and daddy said and never once uh, question it. But when you do start questioning, when you are more careful about how you read, <clears throat> you'll be surprised what you'll learn. I want to tell you uh, something that happened, and I hope uh, he's watching. If not, I'm sure he'll he'll see this DVD. I was talking to a a fellow in Kentucky, and some of you uh, on the Internet, on Facebook and so forth, you know about this. I've told you about this. But there's a fellow in Kentucky who called me a a couple years ago, and we were talking back. We've been talking back and forth ever since. And come to find out, I thought he was actually a member of the Lord's church, but he wasn't. He was in his grandfather's church. And he said once he started studying along with us and realizing that what we're doing is opening the Bible and making sure that everything lines up with everything else, he realized that his grandfather and the church that his grandfather was preaching in was wrong. So what he did was he started getting some understanding about how he was reading. He was reading incorrectly at first, but when he started to realize the sum of thy word is truth, Psalm 119, verse 160, in the American Standard, it is, it is uh, 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 evident that he hasn't been reading correctly because he was in his grandfather's church. He obeyed the gospel uh, uh, not too long ago, and as a result is now he's in the Lord's church, a church he can find in the Bible. Now, I will say he was, he was pretty, he's pretty nervous. He was a little upset or a little concerned that, you know, his family's going to give him a hard time. But you know what? I got a text from him tonight. Right before I walked on the air, got, got, got a text from him. And he said his wife and his brother had obeyed the gospel. Now I'm saying to you, friends, when you take heed how you read and you're careful 
about, about making sure that what you are understanding the Bible to say is in harmony with everything else in the Bible, you then can have a greater understanding and, and a knowledge of what, God, of what God wants from you. In Ephesians chapter 5, uh, Paul said that we are to understand the will of the Father. And so what we're, uh, what we're concerned with is making sure that everything we do is in keeping with his will. That's Ephesians 5 verse 17, understanding what the will of the Lord is. You won't be, you won't be a, have a knowledge of his will until you read correctly. Now, what I want to do tonight is I want to play you a little video of a gentleman that we met. And some of the things that he said, some of the things he said are a result of him misreading. Misreading. Now, I, did, I wasn't recording the whole conversation. I didn't know who this gentleman was. He seemed to know who I was. And I handed him a flyer and I... Uh, invite him to come out to the tent meeting and I turned around to leave and he follows me out of the house and into the carport there and he starts questioning some of the things that I say on some of my TV programs. So I know he's watching. I know he watches and that's fine. I don't have a problem with that at all. But then in the conversation, he said that he was going to do a miracle and that's when I got the camera out. Now I wish that I'd got him saying all his lies beforehand but I didn't realize that that was the kind of individual he was. I thought he was someone who was honest. But this is, this is part of a conversation that I had with this gentleman, if, if we want to call him that. And uh, I'll let you listen to him, and then we'll go over some of the things, parts of the conversation that he said. You're not going to do a miracle? Well, now, now the Holy Spirit's not speaking by you. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. We'll do a miracle. Perform a miracle. Something supernatural. You don't cast your pearls before the swine. Oh, I see. That's what it is now. You I don't see what it is cast now. cast your pearls before the swine. So, so, so what's your name, Mr. Paul? So, so just keep eating your slaw. So, keep so, preaching your slaw. So who are you? Hey, who, who are you? I told you I am. Who are you? I'm James Oldfield. Who are you? Won't you make another face like you did on TV? <laughs> make them old faces like you made. Yeah. Make, make the faces like you did on TV. Well... Later on, he starts, he starts crying and whining. And, uh, and so I'm just saying this is the kind of individual that we were dealing with. Now, in the conversation prior to this, this is some of the things that he said. He said that Judas was not given the Holy Spirit. Now, see, here's what we're dealing with, friends. When you don't read carefully... You will have a preconceived idea. Now, I know what he's saying. They want to say that Judas was a devil and that he never got the power of the Holy Spirit. The reason why they want to say that is because they're going to have a trouble with individuals being given something and then falling, see? It's just one saved, always saved business or this idea that, you know, you can't, you can't uh, fall from grace or you can't be uh, removed once that you were saved. They can't accept the fact that he was given the power of the Holy Spirit and then he fell from that position uh, because, uh, as someone who once had the Holy Spirit. So the question was, was Judas given the Holy Spirit? Now, now, Mr. Fingerwagger here, this is what he says. He says, no, that Judas did not have that power, that he did not have the ability to, to do things uh, miraculously, supernatural. I tell you what, Judas did a better job of doing supernatural things than this man did. This man said that he was going to do a miracle, and then the only thing he, he, he would do was quote a scripture. Well, friends, anybody can quote the scripture. The devil can quote the scriptures. So that's not a miracle. That's not supernatural. But did Judas have the power of the Holy Spirit? That's what we're asking. Well, Jesus and Matthew both said yes. Let's just look at this. In Matthew uh, chapter 10, let's just, let's just read together here. Can you check this for me? <clears throat> and when he had called him his 12 disciples. Now notice carefully, friends. Take heed how you read. How are you reading here? When he called to him his 12 disciples. How many were there? 12 disciples. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. 
Now, the 12 disciples had this power. The 12 disciples were given this power to cast out spirits, to cast them out, to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now, who are these 12? Now, the names of the 12 apostles are these. First, Simon, who was called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip, and Bartholomew, uh, Thomas, and Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, uh, Labaius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them. Now stop for a moment. Let's read carefully. In verse 1, in verse 1, we read that he called his 12 disciples and he gave them power. And the names of these 12 are included Judas. Judas is one of those 12. Judas is one of the 12 that gave, that to whom Jesus gave the power to cast out unclean spirits. Now, if that's not good enough for you, you need to read again. Now, Mr. Fingerwagger, he, wa he was very adamant that no, Jesus did not give Judas his power. He gave it to the 11 true disciples. That's not what the Bible says. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says he gave it to the 12. And he sent these 12 forth and commanded them, saying, Go not to the way of the Gentiles, and to the city of the Samaritans, uh, enter, enter ye not. But go right to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, now remember, these are the twelve. As ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Well, everybody except you, Judas, because I didn't really give you this power. See, I'm giving it to the twelve, but not really to the twelve, just to the eleven true disciples, not to you, Judas, even though you don't really know it, because I didn't specify that you weren't going to get it. I said I'm going to give it to the whole twelve. See how it is, friends? Now, this man, this man is so dishonest when it comes to the Scripture, he's not even going to listen to what Matthew says, and he's not going to listen to what Jesus said as recorded by Matthew. But Jesus said to these 12, including Judas, he's one of those 12, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Now, Friends, I have to wonder if this man is really all that uh, uh, honest or has he just not read carefully? Now, he wants you to believe, he wants you to believe that, um, that he's a careful reader, but I submit to you that uh, he, has, he has not read very carefully at all. Otherwise, he would know that Jesus did give Judas his power. But instead of changing his doctrine to fit what the Bible says, he wants to deny what the Bible says so that he can have his doctrine. Friends, if you're concerned about the truth, and if you love the truth, you wouldn't worry about whether Judas had the power of the Holy Spirit in order to, to heal, sick, uh, heal the sick or to cast out, uh, cast out uh, demons. What you would do is you would say, well... That's what the Bible says. Let's make sure that my doctrine, my belief, my teaching uh, fits that. But that's not what this man is concerned with. That's what he's not concerned with. Now, notice this. In Matthew chapter 12 and verse 26, Matthew 12 and verse 26, here is what Jesus says to those who said that he cast out demons. They said that he cast, the Pharisees heard it. And said, this fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. So when Jesus performed a miracle, they said that he did it by the power of the devil. Now, I guess, I guess that Mr. Fingerwagger, he's going to say that Judas did those things by the power of the devil. He did say the devil had the power to do miracles. But let's notice this. Here's what Jesus said. Jesus knew their thoughts. And said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he had divided against himself, how shall then his kingdom stand? So, Mr. Fingerwagger wants to say that Judas cast out devils, but yet that he was a devil. Well, Jesus would say to him, How is that possible? Why would Satan cast out Satan? 
number one. And number two, where did Judas get this power to cast out devils if it wasn't from Jesus? Jesus said he gave it to them. So Mr. Fingerwagger is having a problem because he hasn't read very well. Now, I don't know. Maybe he can't read very well. Maybe that's the problem, and I, I apologize for that if that's the case. He could quote the scripture, or at least one or two of them. But see, what you happens when you don't have the right theology, when you don't have the right doctrine, when you're trying to read into the Bible because you don't want Judas to have power, because you want Judas to fall, because you say he was a devil from the very beginning. And I'm saying that Jesus said Jesus was a devil from the very beginning because he knew what he would do. But not because... He was the devil, but because he was going to do the devil's will later on. Jesus knew that. Now, why do you have a problem with Judas having the Holy Spirit? You know why? Because they want Judas to be eternally damned. But that's just not the case. Notice this. In Acts, in Acts chapter 1, and I say verse so. Uh, 20, whoop, sorry about that. Verse 17. Now let's start verse 16. Men and brethren, this scripture must need to be fulfilled which the Holy Ghost spake by the mouth of David before concerning Judas, which was God to them that took Jesus, for he was numbered with us, and he obtained part of this ministry. Now was he part of the, of the apostles' ministry? Yes, he was. He was one of the twelve. He was one of those twelve that Jesus called. So now Mr. Fingerwagger is not only called Jesus a liar and Matthew a liar, now he's calling Luke a liar because Luke is recording this and also he's calling Peter a liar because Peter is the one who's saying it. So Peter's standing up and now Mr. Fingerwagger, because he wants his doctrine uh, uh, j just so and he doesn't want uh, Judas to have the power of the Holy Spirit ever to have had it. So now he's called Peter a liar. He's called Jesus a liar, Matthew a liar, and Luke a liar. And so here it was, but Peter says he obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased the field with the reward of iniquity. Falling headlong, he burst the sun in the mist, and his bowels gushed out. And uh, it was known uh, unto all the dwellers in Jerusalem, insomuch that this field is called in the proper tongue, Al-Sodama, that is to say the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, let no man dwell therein, let his bishop another take. Wherefore, of these men have accompanied us uh, all the time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John. That same day that he was taken up from us, one must be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And they appointed Joseph, called Bar Bar Barsabas, and Justice Matthias, and they prayed uh, Lord, which thou knowest the hearts of men, show what these two men thou hast chosen, that he may take part in this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas by transgression fell. Now listen, Judas couldn't fall by transgression from the apostleship unless he was part of the apostleship. Now friends, why don't you be careful how you read? Why don't you be careful how you read to make sure that your doctrine is in line and keeping with with the Bible. See how it is? So it's so easy to say that, yes, Judas, I have no problem saying Judas had uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't have a problem with it. My doctrine doesn't is not going to fall by saying that because the Bible says it. Judas had this power. Did he lose the power? Yes, he lost the privilege of the power as well because he fell from the apostleship. Why is that so difficult? Unless you've got a doctrine that you're trying to fit into the scripture that's going to be shot in the foot if you have Judas having the Holy Spirit. See, when people say, well, Judas couldn't have the Holy Spirit because he fell and no one can fall, you know, since you can't fall, Judas couldn't have had it because he fell. Well, wait a minute. You just said he fell. You, you can't fall unless you're up. You can't fall down unless you're up. See how it is? So be careful how you're reading. I tell you what, Scotty, since we got started, like, go ahead and put the phone lines up and we'll move along and <clears throat> uh, take some calls as they come in. So, so, friends, be careful how you read. Now, 
Here's something else that will say, all right, you want to work in the Lord? Yes, sir. You, you uh, don't? I got, a, uh, I got a question for you. We'll make comment first. I, don't, I just don't think it's right that you take a, a member of the community's picture like that, even though he is wrong, as you just, you know, we, I, he was filled, we had the spirit. I just, I, I just don't think, I couldn't see Jesus going out taking pictures of folks and then putting them on TV and okay. talking bad about them like that. Okay. Well, did you not hear what I said? I wasn't recording this till he said he was going to do a miracle, and I told him. I said, well, I'm going to record this. If you're going to do a miracle, I'm going to record it. So he waited till I got my camera out. So he knew that I was going to do it, and I told him I was going to be on TV. Uh, I could play the whole thing if you wanted to hear it, where I told him it's going to be on TV. He knew it was going to be on TV. He expected it to be on TV. As a matter of fact, he kept repeating what he said so that he, and in his own words so that you don't have to waste time making me repeat it. I'm just going to repeat it for you. So he knew he was going to be on TV. He knew I was recording it. I mean, I was very obvious with my camera. So um, I, don't, I don't just walk into people's doors with the camera in their face. But when he started the conversation and, and said he was going to do something that I thought everybody in the community would want to see, okay. he, he was going to do a miracle. So... Okay, I'll follow you now. Well, here's my here's my question. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Here's my question. Okay. Um, I called in probably seven or eight months ago, and um, uh, you give me a challenge. You told me to find one person in the Bible that had gotten saved but hadn't got baptized. And, um, well, I was reading Acts no. chapter 4, and I found that 5,000 people come to the Lord that day, and nowhere in Acts chapter 4 or Acts chapter 5 does the Bible record them being baptized? So okay. you asked me to find one person had, that, that got saved that hadn't been had, that did not get baptized, and I actually found five thousand. Can okay. you show me okay. in the Bible where those five thousand people were baptized? And thank you for your time. Okay. Are you going to stay on the line? Yeah, if you, if you okay. want to, it okay. doesn't matter. Yeah, yes, yeah, down. So here's Acts four and verse four. How be it many of them which heard the word believed? And the number of the men was about 5,000. So are you saying that simply because the Bible says they believed and doesn't record anything else, that that is what, that's all they did to be saved? Well, the, the, the Bible says that, um, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12 that no man can say Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Spirit. And John chapter 3 verse number 16 says, that for God so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then in Romans chapter 10, verse number 13, oh. the Bible says whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay. So yes, yeah, exactly what I'm saying. They, they believe, so they had to be saved. Okay. So let me ask you this, though. Now, does a person, does a person have to repent in order to be saved? Because Acts 17.30, Paul says God committed all men everywhere to repent. Well, yeah, I mean, if you, if you, if you believe in the Lord, you repent. And no, if, uh, no. If, if no. you look... Uh, no, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. But belief does not necessarily equate repentance. Because somebody can believe in the Lord, but that doesn't mean they're going to repent. Well, the, the, if you read it, in fact, I, I'm, I'll pull it up here. We, um, you know, uh, we, did you just believe in the King James Version? Do you believe that the, that the Amplified Version can shed light on that as well? I would, I would be, I'm skeptical of, of anything other than the King James or the American Standard. Those are the two that I, I trust the most now because why, why I find problems you? in the rest of them, but... Okay, because my question is why you know why I know that as you know the the New Testament was written in the original language of Greek, and okay. the Amplified version was taken from the original language okay. of Greek as well. Okay. And um and and the Bible says um in fact it says this in Acts chapter four verse four that many of those who heard the message believed, and in parentheses which really elaborates on the Greek word there believe. It says adhere to and trusted in and relied on Jesus as the Christ. And the Bible says, and their number, in fact, you see it right there where it says, and the number, which is talking about, you know, the, the church, and the, their number 
grew and came to about 5,000. Okay. but I but, think it's very evident that <clears throat> they I don't think the Bible will record but, them. But I'm saying, sir, I, I don't deny that they're saved. But what I'm denying is the fact that they believed only. Because repentance is also required for them to be saved. And also confessing Christ. In Acts chapter 8, the eunuch said, here's water, what does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, you have to make the confession. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Even Romans 10, let's put this up here. This would be a verse, I think, didn't you quote, uh, or didn't you allude to this? Uh, Romans, Romans chapter 10, verse number 13, whoever calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah, but, and, but, but before that, back, back up before that, Romans, Romans, Romans 10 and verse 9. That's correct. All right, look at this. He says, <clears throat> If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord,